Good morning, colleagues. It's, uh, it's been 10 o'clock. We'll wait one more minute to see if uh, Councillor De Roos join us. We didn't receive, did we receive any message from him? No. I don't see him. Good morning, uh, colleagues, and uh, welcome to uh, Agricultural Rural Affairs Committee meeting, Thursday, February 3rd, 2022. Uh, I'd like to read my statement. This is a public meeting to consider the proposed comprehensive official plan and zoning bylaw amendments listed as item one to four on today's agenda. For the item just mentioned, only those who make oral submissions today or written submissions before the amendments are adopted may appeal the matter to the Ontario Land Tribunal. In addition, the applicant may appeal the matter to the Ontario Land Tribunal if council does not adopt an amendment within 90 days of recipient of the application for zoning and 120 days for official plan amendment. To submit written comment on these amendments prior to their consideration by city council on February 9, please email or call the committee or council coordinator. So folks, uh, obviously we're having our meeting on, on Zoom. We all know the Zoom rules and regulation by now. Uh, we have no regret, but I'm gonna ask uh, our coordinator, Kelly, to uh, do roll call. Kelly? Uh, you might have to... Okay. Uh, Councillor Gower? Here. Councillor DeRuz? Here. Councillor Moffat? Saw you, I see you. Here, yeah. Councillor Meehan? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Kitts? Here. And Chair, sure, you have quorum. Thank you, uh, Kelly. Okay, so uh, declaration of interest. See uh, none. Confirmation of minutes, minutes 28, meeting of uh, 2nd December 2021 of the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee. Can we confirm Carrie. the minutes? Okay, thank you. Uh, item number one is a zoning bylaw amendment for 2256 and 2220 Burnt Land uh, Road in West Carlton March. Uh, the report Recommendation item one, that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee recommend council approve an amendment to zoning by law 2008-2504-2256 Burn Land Road for the purpose of rezoning the land from agriculture zone AG1 to agriculture zone subzone 5 AG5 prohibit residential use on the retained farmland as detailed in document two. Item number two, that the Agricultural Rural Affairs Committee approve the consultation detail section of this report be included as a part of the brief explanation in the summary of written and oral public submission. On the item? Okay. okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, I see Christine McQuaig is on. Uh, good morning, Christine. Good morning, good Mr. Chair. Good to have you here. I, uh, uh, I don't believe you have any objection for the item if we care, do you? No, I just wanted to be available for questions and didn't need to speak as long as the um, committee was prepared to carry the item. 
Thank you very much. I think we have those items almost uh, in every ARAF meeting. So uh, uh, it's very uh, straightforward, but thank you, Christine, for being here. And I believe we did carry the item. Thank you. Happy uh, day. Thank you. Uh, item number two uh, also is a similar. Uh, item number two is uh, zoning bylaw amendment for 4443 Whitcolton Road. The report recommendation that the Agricultural and Rural Affairs Committee recommend council approve an amendment to the zoning bylaw 2008-250 for part of 4443 Whitcolton Road for the proposed for of rezoning the land from agriculture zone AG to agriculture zone subzone 5 AG5 to prohibit residential uses on their retained farmland as dictated in document 2 item number 2 the, the agriculture and rural affairs committee approve the consultation detail section of this report be included as part of the previous explanation in the summary or of written and order public submission on the item. And we have no speaker, no delegation, but our planner is Mark Gordon is available if any question. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number three, uh, official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment 5368 Boundary Road, 61550 Tender Road. In, in Cumberland Ward. Report recommendations. One, the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee recommend council approve. A, an amendment to the existing official plan schedule A for 5368 Boundary Road and 6150 Tender Road as detailed in document two. B, approve an amendment to zone and bylaw 2008-250 for 5368 Boundary Road and 6150 Tender Road as detailed in document three and four. And C, direct staff to incorporate an amendment to the existing official plan schedule A as detailed in document two onto schedule B9 rural transact uh, of the new official plan. And item number two, that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee approve the consultation detail section of this report be included as a part of a brief explanation in the summary of, of written and rural public submission. Uh, we don't have any speaker, I believe, on this item, but the applicants are, uh, are here. And uh, I see uh, Mr. Hicks. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, any question from our colleague on this item or we can carry the item. Uh, Paul, do you need to speak if we carry the item? You or uh, Ms. Murray, the, the Vice President of Land Development? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we're just, we're, we're happy to answer any questions that, uh, that members of committee may have. Otherwise, we're, we're satisfied with staff's recommendation. Okay, so uh, can we carry the item? Is the item carried? Carried. Adam. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Paul and uh, Jennifer for being here with us today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Number... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jennifer. Item number four, zoning bylaw amendment 4220-4140 Upper Dwyer Hill Road, West Carlton Marsh. The report recommendation uh, item number one, that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee recommend council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 uh, for part of 4220 Upper Dwyer Hill Road for the purpose of rezoning the land from agriculture zone AG to agriculture zone subzone 4 AG4 to prohibit residential uses on the retained farmland as detailed in document two. Item number two, that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee approve the consultation details section of this report be included as a part of the brief explanation in the summary or a written and oral public submission to be prepared by the office of the clerk. Uh, item number four, can we carry? Carry. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
So we have no in-camera items, but we do have two motions. Uh, one, uh, I'll be moving myself, and that, and that we need to waive the rule to uh, to deal with it today. So we have two motions, one from myself and one uh, from uh, Councillor Moffitt, I believe, yes. So on a first motion is, uh, can we waive the rules? And that's uh, for uh, 2023 appointment to the Conservation Authority, Boards of Directors. And I think Kelly already shared the resolution. Uh, I think uh, uh, Councillor Moffitt, Councillor DeRouge, myself, and many of you, we sit on Conservation Authority and, and we've seen that change, but let me read the motion. It's prepared by staff. Be it resolved that the rules of procedure, this is why we did this, whereas the Conservation Authority Act now require that minimum uh, of 70% uh, of, the, of their board of director must be elected official representing municipalities within the watershed. Whereas the city of Ottawa represent a significant proportion of the land area as covered by Rideau Valley Conservation Authority, the Mississippi Valley Conservation Authority, and the South Nation Conservation Authority. And as such, it would require a very large proportion of council members to sit on one of the Conservation Authority board. Whereas section 14, subsection 1-2 of the Conservation Authority Act allow municipality to apply to the minister to allow a municipality to have less than 70% representation, thereby allowing a council to appoint citizen member. Therefore, be it resolved that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee recommend council request the mayor and the city clerk on behalf of council to make an application under the Conservation Authority Act to have less than 70% representation of the Tree Conservation Authority Board. So some of us basically, we're gonna need, I think uh, for Mississippi, five councillors and, and South Nation five, and I think uh, Rito would require five. So basically we need 15 councillors out of that, 23 councillors to be sitting on Conservation Authority. And that will create a huge problem for us uh, on uh, committees, one committee meet or one uh, the Conservation Authority meet. So uh, that motion, uh, do we have any question on it or can we carry the motion? Um, okay. Chair, okay. Uh, it's Carol Ann. Um, I didn't see this motion previously. Is this, uh, was this just added? Uh, yes, yes, that's why we had to waive the rules for yeah. time and purpose. Um, how many do we currently require on a board? Well, right now I speak for Mississippi Valley and Alex Scott and George speak for uh, the other conservation. Mississippi Valley, we have five seats. It's belong to the city of Ottawa. Uh, yeah. Councillor Gower and I, we both sit on Mississippi Valley uh, conservation. So if the, the new rules, the new uh, recommendation by the minister to have uh, basically all five or 70% of yeah. uh, the board should be elected official. I think uh, Council Moffat has his hand up, but Council Moffat also sits on Rideau Valley. Scott? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I've, I've sat on the Rideau Valley Conservation Authority board since 2012. Um, in the time since amalgamation, the RVCA board has only had two councillors yeah. regularly attend, not be on it, but actually regularly attend the meetings, and that's Janet Stavinga and myself. Uh, there's been other councillors on the board, but they, they don't show up. And we have five appointed members and they're there regularly they're there um diligently they do the work we have you know two city appointees on the executive committee at the rbca board and robinson and peter lino who is the current chair the previous uh, uh vice chair was at hand another city of ottawa uh, appointee so we've had uh, very active city of ottawa appointees on there and it's important to have that representation on there that's why it's designed that way we're provided some balance and when it comes to, I mean, we fund 91% of their entire budget at the RVCA just from city of Ottawa taxpayers alone. Uh, so ensuring that we have proper representation, uh, knowing full well that five councillors aren't showing up every every month. We just know that. I mean, it, and it's it's different for some of these small municipalities where they only have one representative. Um, in fact, every other municipality in the Rita Valley 
Conservation Authority watershed only has one representative and the city of Ottawa has six, which just signifies the exact, uh, the, the sheer magnitude of, of the RBCA within Ottawa. Uh, so it's important that this, this element of the Conservation Authorities Act makes no sense. I don't know why they changed it to this. Um, maybe they were getting some lobbying from small municipalities somewhere in, in Southern Ontario. But when it comes to Ottawa, this little caveat of the, of the changes to the act in the last couple of years, it do not, they do not make sense. So this exemption is, is important, and I hope that we can achieve this uh, so that the board can keep on doing yeah. the work and representing Ottawa properly. So um, it won't change anything. Uh, we will still have the, the, the current representation will still be there, the people who actually show up. So yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other question? So on the motion, Kay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, the next motion is um, from Councillor Moffat. Also, we need to uh, waive the rule procedure. Can, so that rule procedure be suspended to consider the following motion in order to ensure timely improvement of service. So can. Sure. On, uh, okay, okay. okay. Councillor Moffat, turn the floor to you. Uh, thank you. So I'm sure many of you had municipal concurrence applications for uh, cellular towers in the past. Uh, this is one of those, except it, it lapsed. So the municipal concurrence uh, lapsed before, you know, I think it was what the three year, the three year period that they had, it's in the, it's in the motion. So, um, but there's no mechanism to extend at the staff level. Uh, so in order for the applicant to continue on, they'd have to go right back to the start and reapply yet this application has not changed at all. Um, so the the motion before us is, is simply to provide that extension and allow them more time. So we'd extend it by 24 months lapsing on December 21st, 2023, because it did already lapse. It lapsed back in, in December. Uh, so that the, therefore be a result of the municipal concurrence for the proposed antenna system at 4118 William McEwen Road be extended by 24 months lapsing on uh, 21st, December, 2023. We're not approving it here. We're just saying that the concurrence um, extends. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that will uh, conclude our uh, air act meeting. So the open mic session. We have no one sign up, right, Kelly? So we have no one to uh, notice of motion. See none. Inquiries. Uh, none. So we're going to adjourn Iraq and then we have to uh, have an open session as a court of revision. So uh, uh, Iraq has been, uh, I guess, is concluded and uh, we need adjournment. So on adjournment, Kerry. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you very much, folks. And we'll take two minutes and then we, or one minute actually, and we open the meeting we can stay on zoom for now right okay good morning everyone am i on mute now good morning everyone and uh, uh thursday uh february the third not march the third february the third uh, so the court of revision statement to be read by the chair of the court of revision at the beginning of the hearing on February 3rd, 2022 for the East Savage Municipal Drain. For the purpose of hearing appeals under section 52 of the Drainage Act by, by owners of land assessed for drainage works under the engineer's report for the East Savage Municipal Drain entitled Court of Revision, amendment to the engineer's report for the East Savage Municipal Drain dated September 2021. This court will now convene for the second sitting of the Court of Revision under Section 46 of the Drainage Act. No appeal has been received by the clerk. Any owner of lands assessed under the engineer's report who has not provided written notice of appeal to the clerk in advance of this hearing should identify themselves to the clerk assistant at this time 
with the request to be heard. But to my knowledge, we had no one registered to speak uh, today. So the East Savage Municipal Drain Court Revision, the report recommendation that the member of the Court of Revision, one, receive the report of engineers appointed under the Drainage Act entitled Amendment to the Engineer's Report for the East Savage Municipal Drain dated September 2021 and the decisions of the first sitting of the Court of Revision held on December 2nd, 2021. Two, convene for the second sitting for the Court of Revision under subsection 46.3 of the Drainage Act for the purpose of hearing appeals under section 52 of the Drainage Act from owners of the land that have been assessed for the drainage works in engineer's report entitled amendment to the engineer's report for East Savage Municipal Drain dated September 2021. So folks, basically, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the second uh, meeting uh, for this court provision. We have uh, not received any appeal notes for this project and the deadline for submitting an appeal has passed. It is my understanding that no one has registered to speak on this item. So I should ask in case if anybody uh, wants to speak about this one. And uh, I see none. And uh, any question from my colleague on the court provision? See none. So uh, I would like to read the red, red rendering of decision at this, at the conclusion of the hearing of no appeal have been filed. Then the chair stated the following. This court confirms this decision of the first court of revision dated December 2nd, 2021. The decision rendered under this court may be appealed to the Agriculture and Rural uh, Agriculture, Food and Rural Affair Appeal Tribunal within 21 days of today, February 3rd, 2022. Sample appeal notice are available from the city drainage superintendent by calling 613-580-2424, extension 25008. With that, the court adjourned. Thank you very much on now with the process. I believe the second step will be working with our legal uh, for preparation of written decision of the court revision. So with that, we adjourn the court revision. And if nothing else, we'll adjourn as court. Thank you very much, folks, and have a great day. We didn't, break, you, your record. We didn't break your records, cause so rest assured it's gonna be hard to break the 92nd meeting. Nobody ever will. I'll remember. It'll be, it'll be the only thing I'm remembered for forever. 12 years on council. And the one thing that I'll remember for is that 92nd committee meeting. It'll never be broken. But that was no meeting. You just opened the meeting and closed it. So you did. No, that's not true. I approved a surplus <laughs> farm severance. That's right. In your you ward, actually. Outside. It is in my ward. So <laughs> thank, you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, have a great uh, weekend, folks. Take care. Thanks, Thanks. folks.